Good morning. Welcome to the parish community of St. Francis of Assisi. In the presence of the resurrected Christ, let us praise God, singing hymn number 64, Let the King of Glory Come. Number 64. Special good morning to all of you as we gather as a community of faith on this second Sunday of Advent. We continue our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My friends, may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This morning we have to listen to the prophetic words of John the Baptist, who reminds us about the importance of repenting of changing from our evil ways. We take a moment to recognize that his words are very strong, but maybe there's something that might be considered. We may recognize that there are certain things within our own lives that are contrary to the gospel. The invitation is open for us to respond. We take a moment and we ask for God's grace and an opportunity to stand before our God, seeking his mercy to grow and to change. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, you are the Prince of Peace who calls us all by name. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh who dwells among us to reveal the fullness of your goodness and love. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us forgive all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. May our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, for he lives and reigns with you in unity with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
On that day, a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide, but he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall exist, shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on any on all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse, set up as a single for the na signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. The psalm response is number 789.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. And at that time in Jerusalem, all Judea and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged all of their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up the children of Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of these trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down 
and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan in his hand, he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with an unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Again, a special welcome to all of you gathered here, especially those of you who maybe are not ordinarily here at St. Francis. We are honored that you have chosen to worship with us on the second Sunday of Advent. And for anybody who actually is coming to church in hopes of getting a message of holiday cheer, um, filled and looking for um, a good quick pick-me-up as we enter more fully into the season, today's scripture is not really for you. The second Sunday of Advent is a little tough. And of course, the key figure here is John the Baptist. He's in all the Advent readings. And John the Baptist is often depicted as uh, one of those unruly rebellious prophets who's out in the wilderness. He's dirty, he's rumbling, he's loud, he's crazy, and he's somebody who distinguishes himself with his leather belt and his uh, loincloth, and he eats locusts and honey. Somebody who just probably shouldn't even be in any kind of a crowd of people. Undoubtedly, he's probably not one of those people that you have on your mantelpiece with your creche for Christmas nor is the message that he proclaims one that you would probably send to any of your friends with your Christmas cards, you know? You know, Merry Christmas, you know, you brood of vipers. Hope the season is one of repentance and you churn from your evil ways, love the O'Connors. I doubt that's the message that you're following. Again, his words are a little tough. And at first glance, it seems as though uh, John is in the presence of these scribes and Pharisees, the so-called religious leaders of the day. They are an audience that's pretty corrupt, even though they claim to be so-called religious leaders. And it seems as though John is addressing it to them. And so we kind of wipe a sigh of relief and say, okay, that makes sense. We could probably do the same, especially our own religious leaders. Um, they're pretty corrupt in their own sort of ways. The news continues to follow day after day. Um, and we could probably have our own time with that if we so wanted to. We'd share a lot probably with John. But then we discover that he's not just, just addressing the scribes and the Pharisees, but rather he's really also addressing the everyday people. The everyday people, the church people, like you and me. People who try to the best of our ability to live good lives, to live by the ways of God and to seek to follow his path. But more times than not, we kind of fall down from time to time and make a mess. Um, we could probably spend a lot of time on that. But I think when we stop and look and see that we are a people who are human, we seek to follow the ways of God day in and day out and the decisions that we make and the relationships that we are about. And as we kind of look at to the words of, of, of John the Baptist, they're a little sharp. You know, I don't consider myself, nor do I consider any of you a brood of vipers. Um, the terms of repenting sounds like something out of a Baptist revival meeting down in the South that we would go if we had a big tent and were, you know, ready for a renewal and a change of life and major conversion. But in good conscience, we do recognize that there is some elements of truth of what John is saying. This idea of repenting uh, is a word that really calls us to look and say that repenting is a way of changing. And to change, I have to first look within myself. And we could probably have our own little to-do list of what needs to change. It might be very short. It might be, you know, eating, skipping all the desserts we like to eat and maybe avoiding all the foolish things that we spend our money on. There's probably another couple things that are in there that are rather insignificant and rather superficial. But I think more uh, intentionally, John is calling us the idea of repentance is really about looking within ourselves, seeing those things, those behaviors that need to change, um, where we maybe need to grow. And of course, if we are going to look uh, and not just 
look at what we think need, but if we want to look and see maybe what God is calling us to change, we have to turn to prayer. And real prayer um, is about really seeking to be in a better relationship with God, of sitting quietly with God, not just rumbling off 15 Hail Marys as fast as we can, but really listening attentively to the voice of God, how God is calling us to be very vulnerable, to be open, and to listen what is it that God is calling us to change within our own lives that will help us to grow spiritually, personally, and in relationship with those people, those that we like, and those that we have a hard time liking. And then we will slowly come to discover that the power of God's grace is revealed as we start to consider some of those things that God may be calling us to change and where we need to grow. And of course, we know it is God speaking to us because it's probably an area or a decision that is quite hard. It's difficult. Deep in the recesses of our own heart, we know the truth of it, but we'd prefer to ignore it and look the other way. Can't help but to think St. Francis of Assisi, some 800 years ago, returning as a prisoner of war, sitting in an old dilapidated church, kind of lost and wondering, you know, Lord, grant me a correct faith, a certain hope and a perfect charity that I figure out what you want me to do with my life, that I may grow in wisdom and understanding. And sure enough, God answered Francis and said, Francis, go and rebuild my church, which as you can see, is falling into ruins. Francis not only physically rebuilt the church, but also began the whole renewal of the church, which was going through its own dark times. And it really led to the beginning of the Franciscan movement in a way that brought about great change and growth within the community of the church for the greater good. Did Francis think that was the answer he was gonna get from God? Probably not. For you and I, as we stop and think again, what do I really need to change? What do I need to work on? What are the areas that I need to grow? As we present ourselves before God, being very open and being very vulnerable, we will discover God's grace will be revealed. Um, again, I often think of the great words of my grandmother, Mary Dunn, who used to say, be careful what you pray for, because you might get an answer you really don't want. And oftentimes we know that it is God speaking to us when the response that we're getting is something that maybe pushes us out of our comfort zones. Maybe I need to go and apologize for a cup, to a couple people that uh, I've kind of been estranged from. Maybe I need to reach out to certain family members who I know are really struggling with certain things. Maybe I need to turn off my computer. Maybe I need to stop drinking. There's a whole host of things that will suddenly be revealed to us that quite truthfully will I think be the ways of the Lord that invite us to reform and to change. But again, this is all part of what we call conversion. It doesn't happen overnight, but God plants seeds within our own life of what it is that we have to do and where we have to go and the, maybe the changes that we have to make. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But the power of God's grace, I believe, gives us the strength and the courage to do it. Again, we are mindful. God's ways are not always our ways. But it is my hope and my prayer that as we enter more fully into this Advent season, that the words of John the Baptist that challenges us to repent and to turn from our evil ways, that we'll take them pretty seriously. We'll open ourselves up to maybe what it is that God is saying to us. And that in answering our prayers, that our own lives will produce the good fruits that reveal our own lives of change and repentance and our desire to grow and to be the God, people God calls us to. May God's peace and all that is good be with you. Together we stand and in one voice and one heart, we profess our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day, he rose again from the dead. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. We now bring our own prayers and our hopes and our needs before the Lord. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. In our desire for peace, may the Spirit use us as the instruments of reconciliation and peace within our families, workplaces, parish, and neighborhoods. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our longing to be free of fear and insecurity, may the Father open us to trust the Holy Spirit who upholds all time and history. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our yearning to be accepted by others, may Jesus help us to see the differences in other people as imaging the broad beauty of God back to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our craving to be free from pain, may those with chronic illnesses, mental diseases, emotional stress, and those who are mourning find a vision of hope in the dreams of the prophets. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our yearning to satisfy our spiritual hungers, may the Spirit give us the grace to empty our whole being through prayer, sacred scripture, and fasting. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. In our hunger for justice, may we be guided by the example of Jesus that our sisters and brothers may have the basics of life and dignity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In our longing for the kingdom of God, may we see in our dead our own hope and fulfillment of eternal life. We remember John Kalert, Peter and Elizabeth Andres, Karen Paloga, Agostino Paratino, Margaret S. Payne, and Jean Farrell. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people and situations we hold deep in our hearts and bring to this holy table, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, as we humbly stand before you as your children, enlighten the darkness of our hearts and of our world. Grant that we may always have a correct faith and a certain hope and a perfect charity as we seek to carry out your holy and true command. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we pre prepare the Lord's table and ourselves to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us join in singing hymn number 60, Comfort, Comfort, O My People, number 60. <clears throat>
Pray, my friends, that this, our sacrifice, will be acceptable to our good and loving God. Good and gracious God, on this holy Sunday of Advent, we ask that you accept the special gifts that we bring to your table. The gifts of bread and wine and the gifts of our lives, may they always be acceptable and pleasing to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and ever-loving God, and through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, opening for us the way to salvation, so that when he comes again in glory and majesty, all at last will be made manifest as we watch for that day, May we inherit the great promise in which we now dare to hope. And so with all the angels and the archangels and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end, together we acclaim. You are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending forth your Spirit upon them, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread into his sacred hands. He blessed it and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper had ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant be poured forth for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. We give you thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, and to all your holy people your Son has gained for you. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all of us, we pray, 
that together with Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles, the martyrs, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for help. May we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in union with the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And now together we stand and in one voice and one heart we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. Let us now share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. <clears throat> My friends, behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Let us become one voice and body of praise, singing hymn number 616, Like a Shepherd, number 616.
If you need extra quilt raffle tickets, please call the parish office. Extra tickets will also be on the table at the back of the church. The quilt drawing will be held on December 18th following the 10.30 a.m. Mass. The script gift card program ends this Sunday, December 4th. Pickups will be next weekend, December 10th and 11th, after all the Masses.